Hi guys, so in our last video, we studied about the parts and the arterial and the blood supply of the stomach. Now in this video, we will cover the nervous supply and the lymphatic drainage and the applied anatomy of the stomach. Now, our stomach is supplied by both sympathetic and the parasympathetic nerves. Okay, so it gets supply from both sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, we know that sympathetic nervous system is thoracolumbar region. Okay, so the sympathetic nervous system is derived from the thoracolumbar region. And in thoracolumbar region, the T6 to T10 part is dedicated to the sympathetic supply of the stomach. Okay, so these T6 to T10 nerves uh, pass uh, along with the uh, arteries of the stomach okay and supply the stomach so what do sympathetic nervous supply supply in the stomach so these nerves are vasomotor so we know that vasomotor nervous supply is mostly by the sympathetic nervous system in every organ vasomotor nervous supply and it supplies the pyloric sphincter by the pyloric sphincter we mean that it is a stimulatory for the pyloric sphincter while the parasympathetic nervous system is inhibitory to the pyloric sphincter okay now it is a stimulatory to the pyloric sphincter but it is inhibitory to the rest of the gastric musculature okay and it is a chief pathway for the pain sensations of the stomach so you have to remember here that the sympathetic nerves that is t6 to t10 uh, supplies the stomach as, as well as the skin of the epigastric region so it this will uh, help us in the applied anatomy that why the pain from the stomach goes to the epigastric region okay by now you must have understood already but that thing we will cover in the applied anatomy also now we are coming to the parasympathetic nervous system so the parasympathetic nervous system uh, is the vagus nerve okay so the vagus nerve gives the parasympathetic supply to the stomach by the help of anterior gastric nerve and the posterior gastric nerve so the left vagal fibers they form the anterior gastric nerve and the right uh, vagal fibers they form the posterior gastric nerve so it can so anterior gastric nerve contains the left vagal fibers and the posterior gastric nerve contains the right vagal fibers okay now these uh, anterior gastric nerve contains the left vagal fibers and it gives rise to various gastric branches to the anterior surface and the fundus and the body of the stomach okay so anterior anterior ko supply karega na okay and also it gives the pyloric branches abhi ye sab likha hua hai theoretical but we will understand with the help of the diagram also okay so abhi ke liye it's a anterior gastric nerve supplies the anterior surface of the fundus and the body of the stomach and the two pyloric branches to the pyloric antrum and the pylorus okay and the right vagal uh, fibers give rise to the posterior gastric nerve and it divides into further small gastric branches which supply the posterior surface of the stomach okay so the posterior gastric nerve is supplying the posterior aspect of the stomach and also it gives the larger celiac branches for the celiac plexus okay so the posterior gastric nerve is involved in the formation of the celiac plexus as well so now we will uh, understand it with the help of the diagram so this is the anterior part and this is the uh, posterior part which i am uh, depicting with the help of the dots okay so the dots represent uh, represent that the nerves are posterior to the organ okay so so the anterior part okay so anterior uh, vagal uh, nerve is supplying uh, the vagus nerve is giving a parasympathetic supply to the stomach by dividing into anterior and the posterior so these anterior uh, part give rise to the gastric branches which is supplying to the anterior body and the anterior fundus of the stomach okay and also it gives rise to the hepatic branch which further gives rise to the pyloric branch which is supplying the pylorus okay and we know that parasympathetic nervous system is inhibitory to the pylorus okay and a uh, okay so this is done now in this diagram they are showing that celiac branch is also given by the anterior uh, uh, vagal trunk but it is not true only the posterior vagal trunk takes part in the formation of the celiac plexus okay so we are done with the anterior part now this is the posterior now what's happening in the posterior is this is the posterior vagal trunk which is giving rise to the gastric branches which supplies the posterior part of the stomach and also the celiac branch which is supplying the cel uh, which is forming the celiac ganglion but also it is giving rise to one of the very important nerve which is the nerve of grassi so what is the significance of this nerve of grassi so 
when there is a patient of the peptic ulcer the treatment uh, is a selective vagotomy when they go for selective vagotomy if they miss this nerve of grassi then this part will get the continuous supply continuous parasympathetic supply and the secretions will continue and the peptic ulcer will not subside okay so missing the nerve of grassi can give rise to the recurrent peptic ulcers again and again even after the selective vagotomy so this is the applied aspect of the nerve of grassi okay now we already learned that parasympathetic nerve fibers these are motor and secretomotor to the stomach and these are inhibitory to the pyloric sphincter and they are, and their stimulation causes the increased motility of the stomach and secretions of the gastric juice okay so this we already know now coming to the gastric branch or the nerve of the lethargic so this is nothing but they are saying that largest branch of the anti vagal trunk which follows the lesser curvature so this is the gastric branch which is nerve of the lethargic and this is also the gastric branch which is nerve of the lethargic which is supplying the posterior part okay so it distributes anterior gastric branches to the stomach as far as the pylorus and also the posterior surface of the stomach as we are depicting the diagram anterior as well as the posterior okay so this is about the uh, this is about the nerve supply now we are moving towards the lymphatic drainage so we have divided the stomach into the four parts according to the arns classification okay part number 1 part number 2 part number 3 and part number 4 so what we have done is we have divided the stomach into the four parts because on uh, these parts will uh, give the lymphatic drainage to their respective nodes so we have to learn those nodes only okay so this is the first part which is draining into the left gastric node okay and this will further drain into the celiac node so celiac nodes are the principal nodes so, uh, uh, near or later all the nodes will supply to the celiac nodes which will further drain into the cisterna chile okay which is the final drainage okay so the, this part is draining into the left gastric node which is further draining into the celiac nodes part number 4 is draining into the counter part of the left that is the right gastric nodes okay so this gastric nodes will take another pathway so this will further drain into the hepatic nodes first and then into the celiac nodes and it can directly drain into the celiac nodes also okay so this part will drain into the hepatic this part will drain into the right gastric nodes then into the hepatic nodes and then into the celiac nodes okay so we are sorted with this part now we are moving towards this part okay so this part we know by the anatomical position that this part will drain into the pancreatico splenic nodes okay and this part will drain into the right gastroepiploic nodes you must be familiar with these names because we read this in the arterial supply also okay right gastroepiploic artery left gastroepiploic artery so this must not be new for you okay now this part is the pylorus part which will drain into the pyloric nodes and it will further drain into the hepatic nodes and then into the celiac nodes and this will further drain into the cisterna chile okay so in the nodes also i have written the same thing only so i will not repeat all of this again you can take the screenshot of these of these nodes at the last of the video we will move directly towards the applied anatomy of the stomach okay so this is what is applied anatomy so first is the gastric cancer gastric cancer what is the most common region in which the gastric cancer ca gastric cancer occurs it is the pyloric antrum it is the pyloric antrum and the greater curvature of the stomach so gastric cancer is occurring mostly at the greater curvature of the stomach while the gastric ulcer will occur mostly along the lesser curvature of the stomach this is the point you have to remember so gastric cancer is occurring most commonly on uh, on the pyloric antrum and the greater curvature of the stomach now the thing is that this gastric cancer can metast metastasize also it can do the metastasis and by which by which duct it will metastasize by the thoracic duct okay okay so it will do the metastasis with the help of the thoracic duct and it will go to the left supraclavicular lymph nodes and it is called as a trosier sign okay and if this left supraclavicular lymph node enlarges then it will become a varshaw's node okay so this will uh, this is something that you will read in the surgery also but it is applied anatomy that's why i am telling you here that trosier sign 
that means the metastasis of the gastric cancer is occurring through the thoracic duct to the left supraclavicular lymph nodes and if this left supraclavicular lymph node enlarges and it is palpable also in the left supraclavicular region then it is called as a virtuous node and it can also be the first sign of the gastric cancer the patient may present itself with the virtuous node that doctor i have this lymph node which is enlarged and i can feel it and the most common blood group in which the chances of gastric cancer are it is a blood group a okay now the second applied aspect is gastric pain so i told you previously that the sympathetic supply is responsible for the pain in the stomach and this sub this supply is from the t6 to t10 spinal segments and this will also supply the upper part of the abdominal wall which is the epigastric region so that's why pain is produced into the stomach and is referred to the epigastric region okay so the pain is produced by the spasm of the muscle or by the over distension of the stomach okay now the sec third part is peptic ulcer peptic ulcer can occur anywhere where hcl and pepsin is predominant okay it's not necessary that it will occur only in the gastric region or only in the intestinal region it can occur anywhere peptic ulcer is a ulcer where there is uh, there is site of the hcl and the pepsin predominance okay pepsin and the hcl so these can be in the stomach in the first part of the duodenum in the lower end of the esophagus in the mucous diverticulum and it is common in the blood group o so here i have told you one thing uh, i will tell you that you have to remember is that here i have told you that peptic ulcer occurs in the first part of the duodenum okay but if there is a patient in which the peptic ulcer is occurring in the third part of the duodenum which is something very unusual okay in the third part of the duodenum in the fourth part or anywhere else and it is a recurrent peptic ulcer that is suggestive of gastrinoma that is there is a tumor which is producing gastrin uh, which is responsible for the more and more acid production which is leading to the peptic ulcers in unusual places like the second part of the duodenum third part of the duodenum okay so this is also something you will read in the surgery but here you can write it in the applied aspect of also now coming to the fourth part that is a gastric ulcer gastric ulcer is a ulcer which is confined to the gastric region okay so in the gastric region it will occur mostly in the lesser curvature there are various region various reasons that why the gastric ulcers occur in the lesser curvature only first reason is that mucosa is not freely movable in this part okay so mucosa is not freely movable over the muscular coat in this part and the epithelium in this region is very very thin and the blood supply is less here so this part is getting very less blood supply but it is getting very abundant nerve supply with the large large ganglia okay that's why the peptic ulcer is very common in this region there are uh, two more reasons that because of the gastric canal it receives most of the insult from the irritating drinks i also told you something about the insula terminalis that this region will get the most of the insult from the poisons from the drugs from the irritating drinks okay so this is one of the reason and helicobacter pylori is also an important causative factor so helicobacter pylori and the gastric canal these two are another reasons that why the gastric ulcer occur along the lesser curvature of the stomach so it is common in people who are in hurry who mostly worry and also eat the spicy foods okay so the, this is also matlab um, this is also the risk factor these are the risk factors of the gastric ulcers gastric ulcer is notoriously resistant to healing and persists for years together causing great degree of morbidity okay so if so uh, we can say that duodenal ulcer are better than the gastric ulcers okay in this way so this is about the nerve supply the lymphatic drainage and the applied anatomy of the stomach i will put the screenshots of these notes at the end of the video you can take the screenshot of them this will help you in your exams and if you find this helpful then please share it with your friends as much as possible and subscribe this channel and like this video thank you